When the floats go by you, you don't get a chance to really see the amount of work and the details that are there. TV is great, you know, they'll focus on maybe something for a second or two, but you don't really get the opportunity to just like study them and just really appreciate the thousands of hours that go into putting the floats together. That takes a team of people, and we have some very dedicated folks. We have a core group here that is from all over Southern California. They're here multiple times a week, year round, and we actually have regular volunteers that come from out of state. This is on their bucket list that just want to say, I worked on a Rose Parade float. It starts with a design contest. It's a worldwide call for ideas. And all the ideas that come in are on a black and white piece of paper. All these designs are laid out on a table. We go over the drawings and we look at them like, does this fit the theme of the parade? And can we make a good float out of this? And Pasadena's theme is turning the corner. There's a lot of adventures that await a person that, that you didn't have time for when you were younger. So this float represents a lot of different adventures that one can do in your later years. Hence the title of the float, Adventure of Weights. And this depicts world traveler, mountain biker, rock climber, kayaking, fisherman, artist. <laughs> I've actually done all of them except the hang gliding. We should be rarely close to being done. There might be a few touch-ups. And at that point, they want to see the float fully enclosed and how the temperature is. We're spraying insulating foam. I was a student at a Cal Poly Pomona, and I saw these flyers around campus for something called the Rose Float Club. It sounded kind of interesting. So I went to one of their meetings, and I got hooked. It was a wonderful experience, and so much so that when I graduated, I moved here to Burbank and came in knowing Burbank was one of the six self-built float builders. And I said, hey, can you use my help? And they said, sure. And I've been here ever since. For the first time ever, I'm going to ride on the outside of the float. And I picked the most difficult position and the most technically challenging part of the float to ride on. And that's the hang gliding position. It has kept me up at night a few times. I'm like, I keep running it through my head. I'm like, OK, what happens if this happens and that happens? And <laughs> I wanted to know what it was like. So earlier this year, I took a hang gliding lesson and ran off a perfectly good mountain. I remember soaring thousands of feet above sea level and thinking, OK, how am I going to do this for three hours? <laughs> I'm excited. I want to get out there and test everything out. Hopefully I can get on and off that float quickly. <laughs> that's that's my big test. That was, that was the idea. Send it forward. Let's get that engine started. I'm trying to remember if I've ever felt comfortable. Probably not. I tell them, come on, come on, we're not going to make it, we're not going to make it. And somehow, we kind of pull it off all the time. Fire, 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 fire. <laughs> I'm off. Very good.
if all's going well, the float has been constructed and painted, which means that we start off the first few days with what's called dry materials. This is your beans, your seeds, your dry flowers that will go on there first. As we get closer to parade day, 48, 72 hours before parade, we will start with the hardy, fresh materials. No one person can do one of these floats. And I always get very choked up when they pull out on New Year's Day. Each year, I think I turn a corner with a new float. Some might say it's, we're doing the same thing every year, but every year the floats are so different and they're so challenging. 